today we're going to talk about magnetic flux. 30.3 magnetic flux. Flux. Flux means flow. It's from the Latin. Um, flux is an old term. If you do solder, you sometimes do with flux. The flux with solder is what flows between the two things you're trying to solder together and makes them connect to each other electrically. And you melt it and it flows over it. That's why it's called the flux. Okay? So, magnetic flux, we're going to talk about magnetic fields flowing. Now, the idea for this, if you want to visualize it more than anything else, is initially I would say think of rain coming in your car or rain coming in your house windows. If you have a window that's nice and vertical and the rain is coming straight down like it normally does, how much rain comes in the window? Basically none. If it comes straight down, this is straight vertical, especially with a little bit of overhang, you ain't going to get any rain through that window. It's nice, it's cool, it's quiet. And you hear the rain and you want to go to sleep because you have nothing else to do with this pandemic crap. Um, and that's zero flux or zero magnetic flow, magnetic field flowing through that window. Wind starts blowing around a little bit, thunderstorm comes up, it's coming in at an angle. Now, some of it's going through. Now, not all of it, but some of it's going through. Now, let's think about it. When it's coming in, hurricane, it's raining horizontal. You know, you probably have Joe Exotic talking about that. But if it ever rained horizontal, it would come in like this, like in a hurricane. And then all the rain, that could go through the window, would go through the window. Okay. So we talk about flux. We're going to talk about magnetic field. If you have a coil of wire, if it goes straight through it, that's maximum flux. If the coil of wire, and this is going straight down, zero flux. And in between, it's a function of that angle. Bet you can figure out that's going to be trick. So what I want to do is kind of set that idea up. So, let's say this is my B field here at the end of the board. We would say, in this case, I would say max flux. But let's rotate this coil of wire here 90 degrees. So now it's going to be edge on. So you're going to see it. You don't really see the coil. You'll just see kind of like this. And here, there's a minimum flux. Actually, it's actually equal to zero. There's zero flux in this condition. Okay. So what we want to do is try to let's try to put some mathematics behind this. Okay. Let's put some mathematics. So we're going to put some mathematics. What we'll say is that we're going to call it, now of course the bigger the area, the more the flux. So bigger area of the loop, more the flux. Of course, stronger field, harder rain. More flux. And of course, the angle matters for the amount of flux. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take, since it's area, we're going to take this area here of this coil of wire. This is some area. We've all, already talked about something called the area unit normal vector. Well, the Area unit normal vector is out like this. Okay. And what we want to do is, if that's the area unit normal vector, the field, let's make a case where the field is coming in, say, like this at some angle. So in this case, in 
there's some angle theta between the area, and this is the B field, area unit normal vector and the B field. So let's think about when is it maximized? Well, if theta equals zero degrees, flux is maximized. If theta would be 90 degrees, here the normal vector and the B field like this are at 90 degrees. Then flux would be minimized, it would be zero. Be zero actually. So what trig function is zero is maximized and 90 degrees is minimized? And I think Torres knows the answer. Yes, you're right, Torres. It is the cosine function. So this is a cosine function. So putting together these relationships, uh, bigger the area, more the flux, stronger the field, more the flux. And how does the angle matter? Well, it matters as a cosine function. What we can say is, is that the flux is going to be equal to the magnitude of the area times the magnitude of the B field. There you go. Magnitude of the B field times the cosine of the angle theta, which is the angle between the area unit normal vector and the magnetic field. Now, notice this is cosine, so how can we write that using our vector multiplication? Well, Dayton, you are correct. You are listening. Thank you very much. And Dayton is correct that this is a dot product. That is a dot product. Okay? That is a dot product. So we can think of this flux as A dot B. And we're just multiplying it all up. Okay. Now, let's think here for a minute. What if the B is not uniform over the area? What if that magnetic field isn't uniform? And uniform means what? Yes, MLA, uniform means the same. So, what is, how do we do that? How do we do that? Anybody? Look around, look around. Anybody? Anybody? Bryson? Thank you, you are right. Yep, we've got to integrate that. We're still summing it up, we're still doing the multiplication, but we're going to sum up now, in this case, if it's non uniform field, like previous. There's that, there's that, and now the B field is stronger here, it's a little weak there, a little weak there, and stronger there. So how are we going to find that flux? Well, we're just going to have to look at little area components.
do this mathematically. This would be a double integral because you've got to integrate over x and over y. Or if you do a circle in, um, in polar coordinates, it would be basically over r and over theta. Uh, however you want to do it, whatever coordinates you want to use for that. Um, but what I will say is that that is the way to find the flux. And by the way, I didn't give you the term for flux. That's flux. It's capital theta there. That's going to be flux. So it's an eye with a big circle in it. Not a little piece circle, but a big circle in it. Okay. So flux, how much something goes through something else. And this is magnetic flux. And that's what we're going to work with. This will be very important in the next section on how we, much we induce our current.